Well, let's continue on. What, were the, what about the third group? The scribes. Okay, who are the scribes? Well, those are your modern day textual critics. Over here. Mark chapter 1, verse 21 and 22 says, And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority, and not as the scribes. You see, scribes teach doubt. They don't say, Thus saith the Lord, this is God's perfect book, don't question it. Uh-uh, they don't do that. They say, a better rendering would be. Uh, some authorities say, see, over here, we need a, a better translation. You read the preface to the NIV sometime, by the way, and they say, there's a sense in which the work of translation is never wholly finished, I think they say. In other words, we don't have it right, it's not perfect, and it'll never be perfect. You're going to just have to keep buying more and more and more translations, you know. That's good money. Make good money that way. And they're coming out with a new NIV, as I've said in other videos, the 2011 NIV, you know. Ironic that they would pick the 400th anniversary of God's pure word, okay. Satanic counterfeit, that's all it is. But I just want to show you here, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 3 through 5, I'm going to show you the Bible actually describes this crowd right here. Okay, the scribes. Look at this. Verse 3, If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing. Let me just stop there for a second. Oh, I, I know Dr. So-and-so over here, he's, he's had years of seminary training and teaching and he's got five earned degrees. He knows nothing. If you don't consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm going to talk about this more in just a couple minutes here, you know nothing. Your education means absolutely nothing. If you can't produce a perfect standard, if it's just your preferences, then your education means nothing. Let's continue. Verse 4. He is proud knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Now you say, well, you're using the same argument. We can use the same arguments on you King James only people because you're attacking the Word of God over here. Wrong. Okay, I attack counterfeits, which are not the Word of God, and I offer a perfect replacement. I don't tell you, it's up to you. Whatever you prefer. I don't do that. I'm never going to point to you as being the final authority, and I'll never point to myself as being the final authority. I would be a rotten final authority, okay? And by the way, that's one of the ways that us Bible believers can spot the satanic deception over here and the satanic deception that you new virginists proclaim because you try to put it back to our own preferences. And those of us that have been saved for a while know what that means. We know what happens when we rely on our own preferences as standards of truth, okay? It leads to sin, when you rely on your own preferences, on your own feelings, on your own thoughts, it always ends in sin, every single time. You have to be submissive to something. And if there is no perfect Bible, then we're lost. Then we have a problem, a very serious problem. We need to have a perfect standard to submit to, not our own feelings and our own preferences. Okay, And that's why I am so much against, and I will fight until the day I die, by God's grace, I'm going to continue fighting this garbage right here because I know the philosophy. All right? It's not our preferences and your preferences. Okay? It's Satanism over here. It's no authority at all. The King James Bible is not perfect and neither is any other version. That's what the new version philosophy is about. That's not the philosophy of a King James Bible believer. A King James Bible believer says, perfect, 
in error. Okay? These ones are not perfect. This one is. But, you know, if... I would have more sympathy if somebody said, no, the King James Bible is not perfect, but the NIV is God's perfect inspired word. But yet somehow I've never met anybody that believes that way. You get this philosophy over here, somebody that's using one of these new versions, and they will say, well, you know, I, I think that there might be a perfect Bible, but, you know, it's, it's, it's certainly not the NIV. It's not the one I use here, you know. See? And why is it that the people over here will use multiple versions? I've never met anybody who's NIV only. Isn't that weird? The only group of only believers are King James only people. Just incredible. Just want to make another point here before we continue on. Not much to, not much more here in the study, but I just want to make another point. When you, as a professing Christian, Okay, and I don't know whether some of these new version people that attack the King James Bible, I don't know whether you're saved or not. I Honestly, I think that a lot of you aren't. I think a lot of you are lost because if the Holy Ghost was within you, you would not be attacking God's perfect word. Okay, you would not be saying that there is no perfect standard. It's up to you to prefer which one you want. Okay, the Holy Ghost is not going to have you say that. Now, maybe you've quenched the spirit. Maybe you're just, you know walking in your own lusts and whatever and deceived and, and you're just a miserable, rotten example of a Christian. Maybe that's possible, but I'm going to treat you like you're lost. I'm sorry. Hey, if at the judgment seat of Christ, if I was wrong, well, I'll just say, I'm sorry about that. You sure had me deceived. But what if I was right? What if I was right and these people that attacked the King James Bible, I didn't say that use the new versions. There are a lot of people that use the new versions. I used an NIV for 15 years before I found out the truth. Okay? I didn't know, but I'm talking about those of these people out there that know about the Bible version issue and turn on God's preserved word, this book here, and attack it. I doubt that you're saved, okay? Sorry, that's just the way I feel. But let me just say this. If you have made it your purpose to come here to YouTube and to post videos against the King James Bible and offer no perfect substitute, and just tell people it's up to you to prefer one or the other. And isn't it weird too, by the way, how they'll say the King James Bible is an error here, 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 and here, and here, and here, and here. And they attack the King James Bible. And then they, you turn around and you say, well, it's, it's not God's word then? Well, you, you know, you can still use it. You can prefer it. You can. If it's not God's, God's word, then ditch it. Throw it out. Give me something to replace it with. But they never do. The best question that you can ask any of these new version people, the very best question is, where can I get a copy of God's perfect written word? Where can I get one? They will never answer it. They will tell you any of them. Any of them work. <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way. Okay, but let me just say this. When you post videos attacking this book, you give ammunition. You give arguments to the lost world to blaspheme the Word of God. You give them things that they can use that will convince them that there is no perfect Bible and they'll go to hell for all of eternity because of the videos that you're posting. And don't even think about trying to turn that back on me because it doesn't work. Okay? I'm saying these are an error, this is perfect. You are saying, this is an error, these are an error. Everything's an error. Okay? You are destroying final authority, I'm defending final authority. We're not on the same level. No, we're not. Next, I want to show you an example of a simple Bible-believing faith. The kind of people that God will use and that God will bless. Let me just show you what this is all about. All right, here I have a copy of the second book in the Foxfire series, a book, a series of books about people, older people living out in the hills, the Appalachian Mountains, or Appalachian, however you want to say it. And I'm going to show you an example of what simple faith in the Word of God is all about. Here we read, this guy, his name's Happy. 
and he says, the trouble today, they, they write as they speak down south, you know, in the, out in the hills, the trouble today is churches ain't like they used to be. This was written in 1970, by the way. This, these interviews were conducted in the late 60s, early 70s, when the new versions were really starting to come out, the RSV and, and uh, the um, New American Standard Version. He says here, The trouble today is churches ain't like they used to be. I've heard preachers get up in the pulpit and preach, and I didn't believe a word they as a telling. Yeah, and I had some to get up and preach, and they preach the Bible. If a man's a gone to go out and preach, he'd better preach that Bible. If he don't, the Lord won't carry him through. That's right. Now that's a good point of people having a good education now. If you read your, that Bible pretty regular and you know the Bible pretty good, when the pastor gets up there on Sunday morning and goes to preaching some stuff that ain't in the Bible, you know it, don't you? Yeah, you know it right there. Then you lose confidence in that man. Boy, that doesn't happen much in America today, does it? I know that. I've sat with them. I have too. Amen, I can agree. You see, that Bible was wrote on the wall. That was wrote for it to stand forever. You can't take nothing from it, nor add nothing to it. <laughs> Amen. It just means what it says in there, and that's all. Yeah, no, sir, that's it. Then his wife says, There's a lot of difference in church than what it used to be. Boy, if they were only alive today and could see the way the church has deteriorated since then. And there you have the picture of them. There's Happy Dowdle, and there's his wife, living out in the hills, an old hillbilly, and yet that man right there knows more of what the Lord expects out of the Bible, and he could spot the fake preachers that were coming with the new versions. He could say, wait a second, that's not in the Bible. They're adding and they're taking away. You know what the really sad thing is about that? A lot of the new version people make fun, and the educated class, those who deny the Word of God, the perfection of the King James Bible, they'll make fun of somebody like that. They'll laugh at all oh, the old, the uneducated hillbillies out there. Uh huh. Let me tell you something. I made reference to this earlier. Let me just read some scriptures, look, a couple more scriptures to you about what God thinks about education. Let's read here in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. And why? Verse 29, that no flesh should glory in his presence. You better think about that if you're highly educated. You better think long and hard about that when you make fun of old hillbillies like that that have simple faith in a book. And let me tell you something. If you're one of these new versionists, and your purpose is to destroy people's faith in the King James Bible and bring them down to your level of sin and infidelity and cause the unsaved world to blaspheme this book because of your wickedness and your corruption. You better repent. You better fall on your face while there's still time before you send or before the Lord sends you into hell. Okay? It just it, there is not very much that makes me more angry in this life than this crowd right here. This crowd that defends this garbage and attacks the King James Bible. I know of lots and lots and lots of people that have had their faith in this book destroyed by this over here. It's disgusting. This is satanic. Makes my blood boil.